So today we're going to be converting another IKEA knife. I have now started making knives out of fresh ground flat stock. I am going to be selling these knives, so please feel free to head over to my Instagram channel at little underscore tipple, where you'll be able to see when the knives come up for sale. So this knife actually is already for sale on there. If you get in there quick, you may be able to get it. So this is a cheap and cheerful Ikea knife. The steel is actually very, very good quality steel. It's just a bit of a naff handle and a slightly naff design. I saw this project done on the Blackbeard Projects YouTube channel and I was in Ikea, so I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I made a few modifications, but essentially it's a very similar project to his. So we have this knife that, <sighs> I have to say, I, I keep thinking of it as a tomato knife. I don't know why that's my definition of it, but it looks like a good tomato knife. It's a good general vegetable knife. First trick was to take the handle off. It was quite an awkward angle to be able to take the handle off, just because of the way that it was shaped in terms of cutting down. But we had got the handle off, and that you can see a very short tang, and that's my piece of leopard wood that I'm going to use as the handle. I decided I wanted to reshape the blade, so again I took my little Dremel knockoff rotary tool. Unfortunately there's one slight issue with this, that the stone decided it didn't want to be attached to the shank anymore. So slight consternation, but then got a slightly different set of stones and produced a slightly better sort of finger hole at the back and then reshaped the front edge as well, just to make sure it had a slightly nicer profile. Then proceeded to hand sanding, having a little bit of an organizer of all my sandpaper, and then proceeded to hand sand it up to a 3000 grit finish to be able to produce a mirror polish. It's not a true mirror polish, but it certainly is a lot nicer than the finish that was on there originally. Now you can see that mirror finish. Other side not looking quite so good at the moment. So got the other side sorted out as well make sure that it had a really nice flat and shiny surface. What I did realize at this point, I made a slight error. I used the same piece of wood for sanding this side as I had for the other. And unfortunately, a little bit of grit got under the edge. And so when I then turned it back over, I discovered I had a few new scratches on the other side. So I then realized I needed to go back and refinish the other side. That wasn't annoying at all. So we're just refinishing that side just to make sure it's got a proper shine on it. Yeah, I'm not sure if a tomato knife is a thing, but I think there's something just about the quite wide blade for the length of it. Just seems quite nice for slicing tomatoes. Because it's such a short tang, I decided actually to set it in a piece of dowel just to give it a little bit of extra resilience. So I got a piece of 10 mil dowel, cut it in half, and then used small little needle files just to be able to make sure that tang would sit comfortably without causing any stretching on there at all. We then start to work on the handle. I got a cheap and cheerful little mitre guide. Part of my adaptation over the original design that I was copying at this point was to actually put a little bit of vulcanized fiber liner in it just to create a little bit of extra interest in the handle. So cut these at 22 and a half degrees to create slopes in the piece. 
and then put that liner in place and epoxied it all together. Make sure it was gonna be good and solid. I then had a little bit of a tidy up and decided to try a new trick that I have learned, which is electro etching. Now I'm going to do a full video on how to electro etch your knives, but essentially, very simply, you attach a nine volt battery to a cotton wool swab and use salt water to be able to etch the surface. Now, unfortunately, one of the videos I looked at had it back to front in terms of which end should be positive and which end should be negative which is why initially it did nothing. It makes lots of noise, it makes lots of fizzing, but it doesn't actually etch in at all. So I'll make sure I get that right in my video. And there we are, the finished etch, the little tipple logo. So I then proceeded to protect the handle to make sure I wasn't gonna scratch it up any further. And using my lovely new toy, my new pillar drill, I created the space for the tang in my now fully secured leopard wood and fiber handle. I'd like to say that I knew exactly what I was doing here, but essentially I was trying to draw lines on it to be able to get a bit of a guide in terms of where the eventual shape of the handle would be. I wanted quite a geometric shape for the handle. So I was drawing lots of lines to be able to create shapes here and creating lots of guides, which I think in the long run, I didn't pay the biggest amount of attention to, but actually this thinking process was a very important step because it helped me decide in my head, if not on the piece of wood, what shape it would be. Turns out tenon saws not brilliant for cutting through long pieces of wood, so I ditched that and got the coping saw and cut it to the rough shape and then fitted up my tang to make sure that everything was going to fit nicely. My pillar drill is now secured to the bench. It wasn't at that point, which is why it kept moving every time I was using it as a disc sander. But this is closest I have currently to a belt sander and actually it works very well. Turns out I can use a plane, that one's just incredibly blunt. So actually trying to use that plane and just doing it badly, I gave that up for a bad job and went back to the drum sander just to be able to get all the edges started off so I could see exactly the shape that I wanted. You'll be glad to know I have now sharpened my plane and actually it turns out I can plane just badly. One thing to remember with a drum sander is if any particular area gets very hot, it's very easy to melt through the drum because it's such a short run, it can get very hot very quickly. So I was then using hand sanding to try and start doing this chamfering, which was working well, but it was going very slowly. And I think you'll be able to spot in a few moments the point at which I got quite bored of hand sanding all these chamfers. In fact, actually, before I got bored, I decided to sort out the front end. I decided I wanted a 45 degree chamfer where the knife meets the handle, which I was trying to do here using the miter gauge. It didn't work. I gave up pretty quickly. That's not an easy angle to work at. So I put the drum sander back on and used that to be able to create the 45 degree chamfer where the knife will meet the handle. cut the end off the handle because it was way too long at this point and then got out the power tools because frankly that made it far easier to be able to get the shape I wanted. However you can see the speed at which that goes down it is a little bit more difficult to be absolutely precise so I used it to take the bulk of the work off and then did the rest with sanding.
tang wasn't fitting absolutely perfectly so I just re-went over the gap where the tang fitted into the dowel and then started hand sanding. So I don't want a round smooth bottom to the handle of my knife but with an octagonal top. Remember, cleanliness is next to godliness, so always keep your workspace clean and free of dust, which is far more important when you have an eight foot by six foot shed and that's the entire space you have to work in. Used a tiny little needle file just to be able to create space so that knife would fit in there really nicely. I hand sanded it to 400 initially and then I gave it a wipe with a damp cloth just to raise the grain so that I could get it absolutely smooth. Sometimes you find that you can get it feeling really nice and smooth in the hand and then as soon as you varnish it suddenly you get lots of these little feathery edges and that's when the grain gets wet it suddenly wants to stand up on end. So it's a good idea just to give it a quick wipe with a damp cloth to be able to bring up the grain before you do your final sanding. And that, before gluing, is the rough shape of the knife. So we're now onto the gluing stage. Used a Gorilla Glue five minute epoxy, not sponsored. And filled it with a little bit of sawdust again, just to make sure that if there were any gaps, it would be filled with that color. Got everything exactly into place, gave it a good push down and then left it overnight to set completely. I think that's quite a good looking silhouette to that knife, if I do say so myself. So I then used masking tape to just make sure that the blade was completely protected and used a little needle file just to work my way around where the tang fitted up with the handle, make sure that any epoxy was removed and that everything was completely flush. I then gave it its final, final sense. This was 600 grit just to make sure that everything was silky smooth. That little Stanley Vice, by the way, absolutely fantastic. It had some really duff reviews on Amazon, but it has been a wonderful thing, particularly for knife making, because you can just turn it into any direction that you want. It's not gonna do the job in terms of major bits of woodworking, but for small jobs like this, it was perfect. So I used tongue oil to do the oiling. There are three stages to this. You put your first layer on, let it soak in, wipe it off, and then do two further coats over the next two days just to really let it soak in. Then for a final sharpen, because I didn't touch the blade initially, it actually had a reasonably good edge, but just decided to sort it out, make sure it was absolutely perfect. 3000 grit and then stropped on both a medium and a fine compound and yes, it'll cut. This always seems to be the test to demonstrate that it'll cut to slice paper, but yeah, it seems to work. So thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, please like it. And as I say, head over to the Instagram channel at little tipple to be able to buy the knife if you'd like it. Thank you very much. Bye bye.